I bought the i5 and i7 Surface Pro 8 to test with this eGPU and RTX 3080. From there, I've tested both the internal display as well as an external display at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K to see how they compare. Setup was very simple. Once the Thunderbolt cable was connecting both devices, the Surface automatically downloaded the NVIDIA drivers. I then downloaded and installed GeForce Experience for the game ready drivers. Then everything was ready to go. Starting with the internal display. You can see there's around a five to 10% increase in performance on most of the games tested using the i7 over the i5 and Far Cry 6 having around a 20% increase in performance. This is using the suggested resolution of 2880 by 1920 in the highest settings. For my test, games like Apex Legends seem to be benefiting the most from the i7. However, this i7 is running much warmer than the i5. The cooling system in the Surface Pro 8 seems to be more effective keeping the temps down on the i5 across the board. The gaming experience on this internal display is really enjoyable. This is running at 120 Hz, so the gameplay feels fast and fluid. That higher resolution on this 13 inch size looks incredibly sharp and the colors are bright and contrasty. Moving to the external display and I am seeing similar results. Most games performed around five to 10% better using the i7, but Far Cry 6 and Apex performed around 13 to 17% better. And again, the CPU temps are higher on the i7 across all the games I've tested. Now, my original assumption was that the i7 would provide better performance, and that is true, averaging around 10% faster performance across all of these tests. But I was surprised how much warmer the CPU temps are. The Surface fans definitely ramp up and are audible, but they're not terribly distracting. The Surface and eGPU combined noise levels were around 65 decibels on full load. The devices themselves do feel quite hot, especially in the middle of the back. I did notice some core thermal throttling with the i7 when running Far Cry 6 benchmark. However, I have not seen any thermal throttling on the i5. Still, this is a tablet. This is not the most cost-effective, high-performance setup. Instead, this combination provides versatility. The ability to have an ultra-portable, full Windows 11 tablet to take with you to work or school, then use that same device docked into an eGPU for more graphical performance to play games or use for other professional workloads is still really exciting. I think there is more to the story when deciding between an i5 and an i7. The i7 will give you an average of 10% better performance when gaming, but you don't buy a setup like this just for games. The tablet itself needs to meet your needs, and I'm going to test both these devices further in my full review, so subscribe if you wanna see that. Okay, so a few days ago, I made a video testing this eGPU with the base model and comparing it to my desktop PC. There were a few comments concerned about the difference between Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 as this eGPU is advertised as Thunderbolt 3 compatible. Here's what I understand around Thunderbolt 3 versus 4. Both versions have the same top speed of 40 gigabytes per second. However, Thunderbolt 4 has a stricter set of requirements, which includes having all four PCI Express lanes, whereas only two were required on Thunderbolt 3. Additionally, Thunderbolt 4 is integrated directly into the processor instead of a separate controller, which in effect reduces latency. This spec is more important to have on the surface as it's a bit clearer on what the capabilities are. As far as the eGPU is concerned, it's still using that max speed of 40 gigabytes per second. So I don't believe there would be any difference whether this was advertised as Thunderbolt 3 or 4. I also searched for an eGPU that was advertising itself as Thunderbolt 4, but I haven't found one yet. If I find one, maybe I'll pick it up and see if there's any differences. Okay, so I'll be using some of this information in my full review. Let me know if there is anything else you would like to see in the comments below, and I'll do my best to try to add that into the upcoming video.